Barakatuh, dearest respected viewers, welcome to Ahkam SOS, the show that discusses religious duties and practices by His Eminence, the Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq Shirazi. May Allah prolong his life. I'm your host, Mohsin Shah, and joining me is Sheikh Ali Ma'ar. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Assalamu alaikum, How are you? Hope you're well. Alhamdulillah. MashaAllah. Sheikh, now, mashaAllah, we've had really good discussions over the last episodes. We were discussing uh, Maqam as Salah, where to pray. We were discussing um, the Adhan and the Aqama. I just had a few questions in regards to uh, the Salah and, and, and where to pray. We, you know that some, mashallah, we have pictures in our rooms sometimes And we have pictures of our maraja and ulama We have pictures of our family members And sometimes of animals and, and plants Are we actually allowed to pray in rooms like these? A'udhu billah as-sami'a al-alim min ash-shaytan al-rajim Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen Wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa alihi al-tayibin al-tahirin Allahumma salli ala With regard to praying in places in which there are pictures of human beings or even animals and as mentioned in the books of the fiqh the um, the uh, beings in, in which they have uh, soul or spirit in, in, in okay. other words so they are living creatures in other words any pictures of them um, while you're praying and the pictures are exposed and can be seen, then they are makruh and disliked. It's not haram. You can pray in a room with, you know, filled with pictures, but it's makruh. And um, of course, if you can uh, cover them with a curtain, with something that you can't see it when you pray, then that will uh, raise the issue of karaha and the dislikeness of praying while there's a picture of someone uh, on, on the wall, for example. And I've seen in one of the Islamic centers in, in London where they have the picture of the, their own marja and alim. So what they do, they have a small curtain uh, on the picture. Whenever they want to pray, they close that curtain so nobody can see the picture. So while they cover they the picture up there. Exactly. They put a string or something. And then they just, just uh, open again and then, uh, you know, as usual. So it's just the, t the time of the salah. Uh, when someone wants to pray in that place, make sure that uh, if you want to get the reward, more reward, then try to avoid praying in a places with pictures and photos of uh, ulama or your loved ones or even animals. Um, but if you cover them or you choose a place where there are no p pictures, then that's a uh, better option. So t just to clarify, Sheikh, now, does it matter if the picture is directly in front of, of, of where you're, you're worshipping or if it's on the side you know it does it does it actually matter well the picture is in the room so that's the whole issue being in the room so either in the left side or back side or in the front side then it's better to cover it or remove it and then uh, put it back again when you finish the salah awesome. well what about other things and other ornaments that we you know we like to hang up in our in our rooms for example uh, it's very cultural to have traditional uh, musical instruments and stuff just hanging on the wall and things like that. Are we allowed to pray in a room like that? Well, there's no issue with uh, praying in such place um, where there's a there's a let's say a musical instrument, let's say a, a guitar for example or a piano, being in that room uh, for that person. However, it's better not to pray in such places. Um, by the way, I have a hadith from Wasail al-Shia and the Kitab of Al-Kaf al-Sharif. Two main sources of the Shia hadith. Qala Abu Abdullah al-Sadiq alayhi salam. Imam al-Sadiq states with this regard. He says, Bayt al-Ghina'i la tu'manu fihi al-Fajia. The house in which the songs are played, um, music is played, in other words, the songs, the ghina. The house in which people play songs, um, three things might happen to that house. 
the Imam Salamun Ali mentions those th three uh, things. Number one, La tu'manu fihi al fajia. There's no guarantee that this house won't face calamity or disaster. So God knows, maybe one day, you know, the ceiling or the roof collapses on them. Na'udhu Or the house catches fire, for example, and everyone dies. Mm -hmm. So the house in which they play songs, that's one of the possi possible consequences. The second one, the Imam says, Wala tujabu fihi da'wa. The dua won't be answered in that house that oh plays wow. songs, of course. So the dua, you pray there, you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for something, the dua won't be answered. Because that house is the house in which they play songs and music. And the third one, Wala yatkhuluhu al malak. The angels won't enter that house. Mm -hmm. Um, and the importance of angels being in our house is very important. That brings the barakah, the mercy, the yes. forgiveness, um, the bounties to this house. So we need them to be with us, especially when we read Definitely. Hadith al-Kisa, for example. Mm. This blessed uh, Hadith and Dua that we read, mentioning the five members of the Prophet ﷺ, of his household, and uh, how they gathered under the Kisa under the, the blanket and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would uh, you know the malaika would, would gather in the house in which this hadith is read so the house in which the songs are played they will not actually uh, gain from these blessings so we try inshallah to avoid playing songs uh, in our house houses and homes in overall and we try to play instead uh, the ad'iyah, the du'a, the Qur'an, mm -hmm. the, the lectures from the ulama, the their words, or nasheed, or latniyat, or such like, because that will bring more blessings. Mm -hmm. So we try to uh, reject and remove any cause of um, distress, uh, any cause of um, bala in which might, uh, you know, ascend on us by obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the whole uh, issue, that we obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So just to clarify, Shaykhna, uh, just in case you are in a position where there is a guitar on the wall or a piano in the room, you are allowed to pray your salah there. It's not going to be barred to. No, of course not. Even the pictures, as I mentioned, mm -hmm. even if there's pictures of even alim, yes. or just a normal human being, or even animals, that's fine. But it's the karaha, the, which is uh, makruh, with, the, with regard to the pictures, and it's better not to pray in a place where there are these instruments. MashaAllah, Ahsan. Shaykhna, what about when we have a masjid close by, we have a mosque close by, but MashaAllah, we're in an area where there's lo loads of Husseinia and there's loads of other uh, Islamic centers. Um, can we go pray there, or, or does one take precedence over the other? Well, praying in the Islamic centers and the Husseiniyat that in which we attend every week and every occasion, um, it's good to have prayer also there. It's good to, um, you know, these are, at the end of the day, uh, the houses of worship. At the end of the day, um, we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Husseiniyah, in the Islamic center, for example. We read Dua Kumail every week. We um, uh, read Dua Joshan in the month of Ramadan yes. in Layali Qadr, for example. We worship Allah in those places. But however, if there is a nearby masjid, and the masjid belo belongs to the followers of Ahlul Bayt, salam, in which uh, the Adhan of, uh, of the Shia is, is called there, then it's better to pray in the masjid, because the masjid is built for the Salah, the daily prayers. To f and of course, to pray at Jama'ah as well. So we try to um, encourage that at least our daily prayers are prayed there uh, with uh, people attending the masjid every day, you know, three sessions a day, to actually um, establish the salah in that masjid. And of course, 
if others wants to wants to pray inside the Husseiniya or the Markaz or the um, Islamic Center, that's fine. They can. But we try to promote the Masjid because that's better. And that's the location and the place of praying the Salah every day. Ahsan. Thank you, Sheikh. Very nice. Sheikh, I, like many others that live here in the West, we have non-Muslim friends. Um, some may be Christian, Hindu, Sikh, of different backgrounds, of non-Islamic or non-Middle Eastern backgrounds. What about their houses and, and their residential areas? Are we actually allowed to pray there, pray in my friend's house? As long as, number one, uh, you have the permission and the consent from the owners of the property. Um, and secondly, um, there's no najasa. So the place you're going to pray, let's say a, a rug or a carpet or a mat, it's not najis, it's not wet moisture, and you pray on it. Let's say they have a dog, for example. Yes. And it doesn't actually cause this najasa to you There's while no you're praying. Exactly. If everything is fine, then it's okay. You can pray, mm -hmm. even if they're not Muslim, not Muslims. You know, he's your colleague at work or uh, in the university or college, and he wants you to come to his house and sit down, have it, you know, biscuits and tea, and chat to, to with each other. And the time the prayer is called, then you can pray there. That's fine. No issue with it. Mashallah. Very good. Sheikhna, a lot of our people have a designated room for prayer. Uh, or they have an area where they can they pray all the time, every day. They pray in that, that room. Um, if one is in the state of Junub, is he allowed to enter that room? Well, if that prayer room was not considered as masjid, sometimes in the airports, you might see this that yeah, have they have a room. they have yeah. a prayer room. Yeah. It says prayer room. It's just a or a chapel, for example, yeah. if it's not a Muslim uh, airport. So, in this case, this chapel or this prayer room is not as a hukum as a rule of masjid. Mm -hmm. Then you can enter it. That's fine. But if uh, the uh, the governing body or whoever is responsible. Uh, made this prayer room as a masjid and the subject was masjid, the title of this place was masjid, then the hukum of masjid uh, considers that nobody was allowed to enter in the state of Janaba. So they have to refrain from entering this place. If it wow. was uh, the subject of masjid. Okay. Otherwise, if it's just a prayer room or a chapel, that's fine. They mm -hmm. can go and sit there or sleep there, let's say. That's very interesting. Yeah. Sheikhna, the trends and designs of prayer mats have changed, mashallah, over the years. I, I know in my day it was quite simple. It was a nice flat uh, you know, carpet, rug that we used to pray on. Mashallah, nowadays we get different materials, different 3D designs, even ones that light up. Some of them are made out of you know, rubber. Some of them are made, of, uh, made out of sponge. Uh, I guess it's for those who have, you know, aches in their knees and, and, and can't take their, you know, hard surfaces. Um, do we have permission to pray on such rug mats? Praying on a spongy mats, you know, has no issue with it. That's fine. You can pray as long as there is some kind of stability and stationary when you're praying. I'm sure you've tried to stand on, let's say, the mattress at home our own mattresses. Our mattresses in the bedrooms are very bouncy and not stable, stable at all. So in this situation, you cannot pray on the mattresses. It's too bouncy. Um, you need to pray on a place in which it's stable, stationary. It doesn't go up, up and down. With regard to these uh, mats in which made uh, with a thin sponge, that should be fine. I mean as long as you have uh, the stability when your both feet are on that mat, spongy mat. And when you do the sujood as well, you have stability as well, that's fine. Otherwise, if you go up and down too much, you know, bouncing too much, then you can't pray in this situation. You have to make sure that you pray in a place where um, you have the stability 
uh, while you're standing, while you're doing the ruku' and sujood especially, uh, and it doesn't go down too much, it doesn't bounce when you put your head on the turba, on the ground, it doesn't bounce. So if you have uh, the condition of um, stability and stationary, then you can pray on uh, the spongy mats, that's fine. Ahsanta, ahsanta. Shaykhna, um, when we go to uh, Hajj uh, and, uh, or when we go to Umrah, um, are we allowed to pray in places um, where like the non-Shia pray? And are we allowed to use the same prayer mats and, and such as a non-Shia? Praying with uh, the non-Shia, in other words, with the Sunnah, mm. and praying, of course, Jama'ah with them in Mecca and Medina, and praying on, on the mat itself, not a torba or a, a piece of a clay or a tissue or a paper or a wood. Um, so just praying on a rug or a carpet with them is not allowed. So number one, we can't pray with them jama'ah. The salah will be batil. Number two, you cannot pray on the mat itself, on the rug itself. On the fabric in overall, let's say fabric. Oh, wow. You can't pray, the salah is batil. You have to pray on something that is not eaten or worn, like but the clothes. Th this is in regards to sujood itself, not the actual prayer. The, the, the sujood has to be done exactly. on, on something exactly. that is uh, non edible and that you can't wear. You can't wear or you can't eat. Mm -hmm. So you can't pray on something that you can eat it. You can't pray on, let's say, Mint, you know, yeah, the, the leaf leaves, of mint, yeah, leaves, leaves and so yeah. forth. Um, but the clay, the turba, we can't pray on it. Yeah. The, the, the soil, uh, the clay is just, you can't wear it and you can't eat it. Wouldn't some argue and say, no, haqqi shafa, you can eat that? That's, we have a special hadith for it. That's an uh -huh. exception. Like turba al Hussein alayhi salam, and very little bit. Mm -hmm. It's very small amount. We have a hadith for that, that's exep exception. But in overall, we don't eat soil or a clay as we eat uh, for example you know um, uh, the flour we don't make out of bread for example but in overall uh, we're not allowed to pray behind their jama'ah their imam of jama'ah and we cannot pray on the mat or on the rug or on the um, car carpet as they pray there are two exceptions number one if you feel there's a danger if you don't pray with them jama'ah, or if you don't pray on the mat, on the rug, without turba, without clay, um, and that's for the purpose of taqiyyah. There's a, there's a danger issue, so you do taqiyyah, and you pray with them as they pray, for example. And the second exception, when the person is jahil qasr, in other words, he never knew the, about the hukum. He thought that if he goes to Mecca, he has to pray with them, khalas. Mm -hmm. <coughs> He's jahil, and ignorant, um, and nobody told him, and nobody, uh, he asked, he was able yes. to ask, it was just something, <coughs> he never knew about it. In this case, um, the salah is correct, sahih, it's valid, and that individual, he doesn't have to um, redo the salah, mm -hmm. and make it up later, it's sahih. Okay. Because he prayed it with this hukum, new hukum, which is taqiyya. Mm -hmm. It's the second hukum. The first hukum, hukum al awali, no. you're not allowed. Yes. La yajuz. The second hukum, hukum thanawi, as they say, is mm -hmm. then yes, he can pray in this situation and the salah is sahih and he doesn't have to make it up again. That's it. Thank you very much, Sheikh. No, very informative. And thank you to all our viewers at home for joining us. Inshallah, you benefited greatly. Please remember us in your dua and inshallah, we'll see you next time on Iqam SOS. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Ah, ah, ah.